Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Good morning. This video I'm going to tie for you a rusty spinner. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about the spinner stage. That is the last stage of the mayfly life cycle. It's the only sexually active stage of that cycle and copulation is accomplished in midair. Now spring and fall when the weather is cooler, this typically happens, the spinner fall typically happens around midday, the warmer part of the day. But in the summer, like we have right now, the spinner fall is typically very late evening or even into dusk. The question is why? It's extremely temperature and humidity dependent. Remember that mayflies, the last molt of the nymph, they lose their mouth parts. They lose their digestive tract. They cannot feed or take in liquids. So dehydration is an extremely difficult situation for mayflies. If the cuticle gets too hard, then they cannot split out of it and the insect dies in the husk. So it's temperature and humidity dependent. And because of that, the spinner fall doesn't always come directly after a dawn emergence, depending on the weather. The spinners can accumulate for several days until the conditions become ripe, which means the spinner falls can be massive. So if you're not fishing in the evening, you're not fishing the spinner falls and you're missing out on really a pretty good bet. The key features, as you'll see in the picture of a spinner, are the long spread tails. The tails can be anywhere from one and a half to five times the body length. How they grow that within the Dunn um, cuticle, I'll never know. Very slim profile and uh, sparkling, nearly transparent wings. That's the most important part of the spinner. Now the rusty colored spinner, which I'm going to tie for you, actually encompasses about 80% of the mayflies. Even if the PMD starts yellow, the bluing olive starts green, whatever, the spinners are typically rusty. And that's for all of the betas, the PMDs, green drakes, the paraleps, the hecuba, the brown drakes, and even some of the calabetas, western march browns, and trichos. So you need to have some rusty spinners in your fly box. I recommend from size 14 all the way down to 20. The, tie, the fly I'm going to be tying for you today is the size I'm 14. using Unithread dark brown 6.0. For the tails, I'm using white mayfly microfabets. For the body, these are nature spirit turkey biots in rusty brown. For the wing, I'm using one half strand of clear sparkle emerger yarn with four strands of pearl crystal flash. And it looks like that. So again, the significant part of the spinner is keeping that thin, the long tails, and the transparent but sparkling wing. Oh, for the hook, it's a fire hole 419, dry fly size 14. So I'm going to start to thread at about the 70% point, which is where I'm going to start the wings. Now there are a lot of ways that you can split tails one is to leave your tag in long and bring that up through your tails. Another is to cut a separate loop of thread, bring it around the hook band and up like that. They all have their problems. This is the easiest, but the problem I have with that, unless this is top dead center and you split your, your tails perfectly, then they tend to skew off one side or the other. I prefer just to make a small ball of thread or dubbing for this, I'm just using some UV2 fine and dry, just a rust colored. We're just going to make the smallest little bit of dubbing here. It takes very little. And then wrap it back to the end of the shank. So we have that, that bit of ball of thread there. Now, as I said in the intro, the tails could be anywhere from one and a half to five times as long as the body length. I'm going to take two microfabets on each side. 
these do not stack well. They don't stack in a hair stacker, but the tips are typically close enough. So I'm just going to hold this to be about one and a half hook shanks in length and just soft loop, tie it parallel to the far side of the body. Grab another pair. measure and do the same on this side. Now you can always adjust these. I haven't really wrapped them down yet. Okay. Squeeze them together to check for length. then some tight thread wraps to make sure they're bound down and then bring your thread back and push these against that thread ball and that will help to split them like that. We come forward, go ahead and bring this back up in the 70% point, trim these off going to let that thread flatten. Then bring my thread forward and then back here. I'm going to make my tapered body here. The body needs to be slim, fairly regular. Stop just short of the tail butts. So I have a biot getting damp here between a couple pieces of paper towel. You can tie this one of two ways. You can tie it so that it's ribbed, you can tie it so that it's smooth. I like to tie it ribbed because it catches more air bubbles, more simulates the actual fly. To do that, you want to make sure that the keel, the hard part of the biot, is towards the tail. Which side is the keel? When you peel this off, of the biot itself or the quill itself. Never cut it, pull it off. The notch here will always be the soft side of the biot. This is the keel or the hard side. When I tie it, this is the side that will stand up and form that rib. So the reason I've stopped just short of the tail butts is because this has some width which we have to account for. We don't want to disturb our tails. And tie these down at the same time keeping an eye towards keeping this body nice thin and even. Now I do like to put a little head cement underneath that before I wrap it. Okay, make sure that that first wrap is close to your tail butts but doesn't disturb them. Each wrap barely over wrapping the previous one and you'll see how that keel, that ridge starts to stand up. I'm going to wrap this right to where I'm going to tie in my wings. Red wraps and remove that. The keel of the biot also typically dyes slightly darker than the rest of it, so it gives you a nice two dimensional tie. Okay. This is that one half strand of clear sparkle emerger yarn four strands of pearl crystal flash. I'm going to tie this in right at about the 75% point. A couple of wraps, one on top of the other, then swing it, and then come across and make a couple of X wraps. We'll get this nice and secured in a perpendicular fashion. 
and then with some more of the dubbing we'll finish up the thorax the head And this is dry fly dubbing. The whole trick is to keep this fly in the surface film. It does not float like a dry fly. It floats in the film itself. That's what makes those wings appear so brilliant. Make sure you have the bottom covered and we're going to come in here and finish off with a tapered head. The vast majority of commercially tied spinners I see are terribly overwinged. The wings are not translucent, they're opaque, and there's way too much of it. I think the picture will show you what it's supposed to look like. And then we're simply going to trim both wings at the same time, shank length. You can measure your hook shank with your scissors, bring it up here, and trim them together. There you have rusty spinner. Of course if you want spinners of other colors the technique is identical. Just change the color of your abdomen and your thorax and you're good to go. So thanks for joining in. We'll see you next time.